Hey, it's Plumber Tom. Thank you for watching my videos. I wanted to let you know really quickly about some awesome resources that I have for you as you're trying to learn. I have free practice tests that you can take if you're preparing for a state test. I have preparation courses that you can take that will guide you through that process if you're getting ready for a test. I have other courses that can help you in learning the plumbing trade. So make sure to check out those resources. You can find a link in the comments below when you participate in those courses, you're helping me to be able to create more content. So I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching. Hey, Plumber Tom here. I'm exploring a house that I did not actually do the plumbing on, but I think they did a really good job. So I'd like to walk through together and evaluate what went well with this plumbing project. We're looking at a plumbing rough here and let's see what we can learn. Let's have a quick look at this plan. There's an entryway from the front door that comes into a great room and a kitchen, all kind of combined in an open space. From the garage, there's a mud room and a laundry. There's a couple of bedrooms and a main floor bathroom down the hall there. There's a master bedroom with a nice master suite. All of this is on the main floor. As we go downstairs into the basement, this will be unfinished, but there's a couple of bedrooms, a bathroom, a hallway connecting all of those, a great big family room, and space for utilities. So we have water heater and furnace in the utility space. All right, these are the laundry room, washer pipes. You can see there's a washer box, stand pipe, all that's good. One thing I really like that this plumber was doing is they brought the reducer for, they got a two by inch and a half reducer on the vent. That vent goes out the roof. And you know, they brought it well down below that upper plate. That's a good thing because if we have frost and in this area, things can get cold enough to frost into the vent pipes. That's well below. You're required to have one foot below that upper plate into the, into the thermal envelope, as they call it. But really good job bringing that down into here. Here's an island kitchen drain and water lines. Got them stubbed up nicely up into the cabinet. You don't want those too short or you won't be able to access those pipes when it's time. So nice job there. We're coming into the master bathroom. There's a tub on the right, a shower on the right, a toilet here, and two sinks. We see those sinks here roughed in, used PVC. We used a nice double fixture fitting there to catch both of those. And it's not required to use a long sweep 90 um, because two, two inch and smaller, you don't have to. But this plumber did use the longer sweep and I think that's good, you know, that's an advantage. Um, those are left open to where they could be glued into rather than having a stub out pipe. You can see that that comes out past the wall into the cabinet and it might make it easier for gluing. My only concern with that is that you've got open pipes. Other contractors are not always considerate. They might um, stuff things in there or not only that, but you can get sewer gas into the building. So. I would say always make sure to close off your pipes whenever you're done with the rough and it's been tested. Uh, even if it's just put a little temporary plug or a duct tape over the face, something. You just don't want open pipes into the building. All right, you might notice here there's an extra PEC supply line over on the right side sink. Uh, this plumber was thinking ahead and that's going to be and that's going to be a line that's going to send hot water under the floor over to the tub and that way a mixing valve can be installed right here in the cabinet. That's very convenient. Uh, anyway, good foresight, good planning. Plumber did a nice job here in the shower, centering the drain right in the middle of the shower space. Come over here, we can see a Moen Posi Temp valve. It's supported along the way, secured to a block that's been reinforced into the studs. And then up above here, of course, the shower head has a PEX drop ear deal. That's gonna give it plenty of strength so that we're not going to have problems with a wobbly shower head. Nice job. The left cardboard over the master tub, that's great. You want to make sure to protect your fixtures. Problem with other trades like, I don't know, sheetrock people and painters and whoever else, they don't always think about this as a finished fixture. This is like final product. So we got to do what we can to protect it. They had the test on there. A nice Roman tub filler valve. Mow in, it's all put together nicely. All right, we're coming into the main floor bathroom. There's a lav, a toilet, and a tub. 
This plumber threw some OSB right over the top of the tub to protect it. Once again, like, you know, sheetrock people and others are just going to step all over it. Uh, they're not really careful. So this is a great thing to do to protect that and make sure that the tub doesn't get damaged. Another Moe and Posi tamp. This has the tub stub. I like using those tub stub 90s. Those are a real quick way. This is actually one of the pre-soldered. Now you can actually buy them from the manufacturer that already have PEX crimp on both sides. And I mean, all those PEX connections and this has already been soldered in. So that makes the installation really nice. You can buy those at most plumbing suppliers. Once again, well secured on the shower head. Looking good there. We see here again, long sweep 90. That's cool. I like that. I just, again, recommend plugging that up. Make sure that no sewer gas comes out and no garbage goes in. Plumber did a good job here securing the flange. You'll notice four brass screws on that toilet flange securing it to the subfloor. That'll make it great for installing the toilet. A note here where this plumber sticks these out. It's coming up through the floor with the pecs for the lav, for the toilet. It's far enough away from the studs you get sheetrock, trim, cabinets, all that behind it, but still far enough into the cabinet that it's not in an awkward space, so that's cool. Let's have a look here at the main floor tub drain. One thing I noticed was that the plumber had to notch that joist a little bit to get the drain connection. Now, technically, structurally, we're not supposed to touch the top or bottom section of any of those joists, the TJIs that weakens the structure but this isn't the fault of the plumber if a framer puts that joist right underneath a toilet or a tub drain what else can we do and the framer will have to compensate and make a structural repair if they don't lay it out correctly so i mean the plumber here did what he had to do to get that tub hooked up where it had to be so that's all right but generally of course we try to avoid that now another thing that i noticed that I really like is the fact that this plumber used a two inch P trap and that's not a code requirement. You can do inch and a half on a tub, but a two inch trap is going to give better flow, less likely to clog. So, you know, he ran that all the way over to the tub two inch, used a two by inch and a half by inch and a half Santee to connect the drain and the overflow. I think that's a really good setup and you're not always going to have enough room in the joist depending on the elevation of your drain to get a two inch trap in there. Sometimes you might have to use an inch and a half, but wherever possible, if you can use a two inch, I think this is a really good strategy. Looking up here, as we look at vents through the roof, this one's headed all the way up. They found good locations away from peaks and valleys. You don't want your plumbing pipe too close to any peaks. This would be a peak right here. You can see in the structure, on the outside, come away from that and had a nice spot to bring those out. With this plumbing vent coming up from the basement, it just needed a place to go out the roof. But rather than just shooting out the roof here, there's actually a whole peak right here, a whole kind of extra roof that comes out, creates some architecture. But they brought that over here, out of the way, and then up out the roof, far enough away from any of the valleys created by this structure on the roof. So another nice job. This is kind of ideal for a water heater flue. Um, it's coming down from the basement and they had a straight shot all the way out the roof. So that worked out nice. You'll notice the flue is double wall. That's type B so that you know it, it can be closer to combustibles but they've gone and removed combustibles you can be within an inch but they've removed all of that wood structure so that we're not gonna have problems with burning up you can see it going out the roof here they've cleared out the roof structure all right let's head downstairs here have a look in the basement at some of the venting that took place here there's a future bathroom here. Uh, by the way, this is gonna be unfinished basement, right? You can kind of just see it's open, typical. But we've got the tub here stubbed up with a box. That'll make it easier for digging out later. This pipe stubbed up for the toilet. 
Once again, we have a lavatory. That pipe was left open, and as I said before, I'd recommend closing those up, keep sewer gas out, keep garbage from going in. But otherwise, we can follow that up. They ran those all the way up and out the roof. So that's where that vent goes. Here's a view of where that vent continues up and goes out the roof. This basement bathroom does have a backwater valve. It's just right there in the floor, branching off and protecting this house against sewer backing up in the basement here. Now hopefully when that's all framed in, that's gonna sit right underneath the cabinet. I think that's what the plumber was planning here. We're gonna follow this laundry, it comes up. Laundry drain comes through the joists. And then 90s up. Use long sweep here, that I, like they should, anywhere vertical to horizontal, long sweep. You follow it back here. Long sweep, 245s equal a long sweep. So that's good use of fittings. You don't want a short 90 here. And over there, it's a regular 90, shorter sweep, but that's horizontal to vertical, so that's okay. The kitchen sink drain's pretty straightforward. Came up right against the foundation, runs through the joists. It's secured and supported up into the cabinet. One thing I'll say about this is when it came to the pipes below ground, this plumber had to really think it through, right? Look how precise that was though. They didn't have to offset around or through joists. It was just like from the underground, from the very beginning. This plumber knew where to put that pipe so it would just come right up into the joist. It's great. All right, let's have a look at the master bathroom. How was this plumbed? It's kind of important when it comes to drainage that we make sure to get our wet vent correct. Let's have a look at this, find the lavatory. Here's the lavatory. That creates the wet vent. Anything downstream from that is wet vented. The tub has a connection to the wet vent. We can see that tub connection as we follow that through. Comes along here. Toilet connects into that wet vent. Again, we're following it downstream. The toilet has a connection and the shower has a connection. So if we go back with venting, we've got the shower and the toilet. They're vented right here. As we come through, we also have the tub connection. It's vented through this. And that's where it goes up to the lab. And that creates a wet vent all the way through the roof. So there were quite a few fittings, offsets, but this plumber knew exactly how to run this so that everything was done according to wet venting principle. Follow this one through, we've got another three inch along the basement wall. A little bit of offset to get into the joist. As we come across, we see things branching off. It's coming right up to the toilet there. So it came right in line with the toilet. That's a great layout, because you want that main pipe coming right to the toilet. Let's check out the branches. This branch coming off here is going up to the lav. It's branching off before the tub. Even though the tub was back over here, some plumbers might be tempted to pipe it from right next to the toilet. But this plumber knew what he was doing with wet venting, brought it downstream of the lavatory because that's where the vent is. The vent doesn't connect above, it goes downstream. So that is properly wet vented with this layout right here. There you can see a little better. Toilet, lav, tub. Perfect wet venting. This plumber used PEX lines, drilled them up into the joists. That's how I prefer to do it. It does take work to get it up into the joist like this. You know, you gotta get in and drill them all. But, that gets it safely up out of the way from sheetrock and other things. And it's a very professional look with branches coming off to fixtures wherever necessary. Let's have a look at the mechanical room. There's no furnace in here yet, but there will be. Gives us a good look at the plumbing here. There's a floor drain that's gonna catch condensate. Anything else here in the mechanical room, but also a backwater valve there. We have a vent for that floor drain and that goes up to the upstairs. Have a look at this main valve. Comes in from below. You can see right here, they've branched off high pressure for the hose bibs before the pressure reducing valve and there's separate control valves. So you can shut off the whole thing or you can shut off just the outside when needed. Comes up through the pressure reducing valve. And then we have a softener connection. See how they've taken softener here? 
This section of pipe will be cut out for softener. And before that, we have a hard water line. So this would go up and catch kitchen sink and ice maker, things like that. Once that softener has been installed, it's gonna be softening cold water that goes up, feeds the whole house, as well as this line that comes over to the water heater. So if we look at water heater installation here, you got a shut off valve and then it comes over, feeds the water heater, flex lines are great. This expansion tank's being supported by the pipe, which isn't actually up to code, but in my opinion, galvanized is pretty stout, pretty sturdy stuff. So unless an inspector says, hey, redo that, they're gonna be all right. This plumber took the time to set this tank at 60 PSI, and not all plumbers do. They come at like 25 or 40, but he knew that he's gonna set this pressure reducing valve at 60, and therefore he's gonna put 60 into here, that's great. That'll make sure that that expansion tank functions properly. Took time to put another shutoff valve on the hot side, that's a courtesy, not code required, but much easier to service these when you've got a shutoff valve on the hot and a shutoff valve on the cold. So that's great. And then we have that hot line just going out and feeding hot water to the house. Let's take a moment to examine these earthquake straps. These are metal straps. They're, they're thick, they're heavy duty, you know, they've been bent and folded to secure the top of the water heater to the studs in the wall, which is really good. I mean, that's, that's pretty secure by the time you get two of those on the top. Um, plumbers in our area have been doing that. I don't know if plumbers in other areas do that, but it's pretty common around here. And it is a good secure strap for the top of the water heater. However, water heater earthquake straps are also required down at the bottom third. So this doesn't quite meet all of the earthquake strap requirements. Other than, I mean, it's good. But um, might need some more help at the bottom. Or, you know, that's why I recommend using an earthquake strap kit. Uh, for all water heater installation code requirements, if you want a thorough explanation, I have several videos that it demonstrate how you install one according to code, how you install the expansion tank uh, with the proper support and earthquake straps. So make sure to check out those videos. So on the whole, I feel like this plumber did a really good job. We've looked over some of the things that were installed and code requirements that were met. Clearly this plumber knows what's required, has plenty of experience, and is a great example of the way that things should be installed.